Imagine your body is like a city with roads and cars. Nitric oxide is like a traffic light that helps the cars or blood move smoothly throughout the roads or your blood vessels. When the traffic lights work well, everything flows nicely and the cars can get to where they need to get to. Methylene blue is like the mechanic who can fix the traffic lights that are stuck on green. Sometimes too many cars are zooming around too fast, making a traffic jam. The mechanic or methylene blue steps in to turn some of the lights red, slowing things down and making sure the cars move at a safe speed. But if the mechanics work too much and turn too many red lights on, then the cars can't move at all, causing a different type of problem. Welcome back, everybody to the Dr. Joy Calm podcast. Today, I'm bringing back the experts, Dr. Warren and Dan Schmidt, to come in and answer some questions and really kind of get people more clear on what this particular supplement can do. So Dan and Dr. Warren, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So apparently people are very interested in methylene blue. Why do you think there's such a huge interest out there? I personally think it's that everywhere Dan and I've gone or other places, people start trying it. And then even in my practice, when I first started out with it, people start spreading the word because they started feeling better. And they say, hey, does it help my brother? Does it help my cousin? And then people just keep talking to one another. So it's not like we need to advertise a lot. We're coming to us because people feel better and they want to spread it to other people. And that's the part I'm seeing, which is amazing, is every time I turn around, somebody said, oh, I've already been on your methylene blue and it's our product and I'm feeling better, but I want to share it with so-and-so or does it work for this person? So I think it's it's not that we're pushing it and saying, hey, this is the best stuff and trying to promote it. It's like we're getting all the testimonials from people and they're coming to us and saying, wow, this really makes a difference. And it's simple and it's inexpensive. So that's what people want. Yeah. And what kind of things do you hear that people think that they're getting benefit from? We've got everything. The brain fog originally when I started it was for brain fog after the COVID thing because people had all that brain fog from the COVID. And I started doing it IV methylene blue and everybody said, man, the brain fog's and back to work. I'm feeling better and I have energy. So the thing we're feeling now is that, oh, it's helped my the executives I give it to, they say, hey, I can get my jobs done, my checklist is done, my desk is cleared off, and I still have energy at the end of the day. So that's the part we're hearing from people is that they're having some energy, which we can talk about in a few minutes, the brain fog is going away. And as you know, it helps clear up some depression, it helps with infection. So we're hitting a lot of different areas with methylene blue. And they're saying, this is amazing. When you think it's the first medication in the world back in 1870, and it's still around and we're getting benefits. The FDA's even approved it for, you know, carbon monoxide poisoning and cyanide poisoning. So you have something that's been FDA approved, but is making people feel better and they're seeing the side effects. And I think even they also notice it because they're going to get the one side effect we joke about is they're going to get the blue or green urine. They know they're taking it because they're getting the colored urine. So mm -hmm. that must be what's making me feel better. So that's this association by guilt that people are feeling better. <laughs> yeah. The other thing too is that when you can use a product, as Dr. Warren's talking about, feel it in multiple different areas because when you can make that mitochondria healthy, energy, energy for the brain, like he's talking about for focus, but actually just for, you know, energy when you're up and going, you just can't get going to just, you know, you're lethargic, you know, we can bring that back in and people are feeling that all over. So when you can affect that mitochondrial health and energy, it taps into everything. So when you talk about ADHD, when we talk about just af athletes, when you talk about mental health and wellness, right? And those, we have so many people that are doing other medications that they're tired of those prescription medications, as Dr. Warren talked about before, getting off those, even those that uh, are in drug rehabilitation, even those that are, you know, that are in depression. There's so many things that it does and we can get the body to function properly across all the things. It's not a magic bullet. But it's pretty close because it's affecting everything that we do in all of our systems. And that's one of the beautiful things about methane blue and why people are so excited about it. Because as Dr. Warren said, they'll feel a difference in all different facets of their life. And that's super uh, important. And that's really what's spreading that word. Mm, yeah. So I'm wondering by improving mitochondrial function, Besides energy improvement, what else do people notice? Could it help people with, let's say, weight loss, you know, if their their cells are functioning better? Is that something that anybody notices? Yeah, we do that all the time. We actually have another product out there called Metabolism. It has the methylene blue and then some natural caffeine. But what it's doing is helping people, first of all, they have more energy. One, even as you know, the people are taking the, let's say, the GLP-1 shots. 
one of the mm. first complaints is they have that fatigueness as they're losing weight or any weight loss program, you have that decreased problem. And so the nice thing about the methylene blue is they're getting that energy, keeping those mitochondria healthy so they feel better and it helps them remind them that they're on a diet. We also know that if the methylene blue is helping the mitochondria build it, the mitochondria is producing the energy so it's burning more effectively. So the engine with this good gasoline we're putting in it is working at a higher efficiency. So people are burning their fat more, they have the energy. And then for a few of my patients that when they go on the GLP ones, as you know, it stops the desire for sodas and sometimes even coffee, they can't drink as much. And so they get the caffeine headaches and the letdown. So if we're getting them the natural caffeine from the metabolism, mm -hmm. hey, they're getting the energy, they're feeling better, the mitochondria is functioning better. And so we were having a lot of people just, you know, enjoying the methylene blue or the metabolism product we have with the GLP-1 injections or even by itself with weight loss because they're getting that energy up, their muscles are feeling better, they're not being fatigued all the time. So, and they're sleeping mm -hmm. better at night. So it's, I think it's a win-win situation. That's interesting. Have you heard of people just There's, taking the methylene blue and was able to actually shed some weight? Yes, there have been some studies that way because Absolutely. metabolism's going faster, they're burning more of the fat, and they're up and doing things. Plus, as you know, since methylene blue is sort of an antidepressant at the same time, they're not as depressed, they're more energetic, they're happier, they're doing more. So it's just a combination of two different things. So we are seeing people just on metabolism by itself losing weight because they feel better and their attitudes are better and they don't have to have as much food. They're not eating, you know, a lot of people eat because they're stressed mm -hmm. and stress eating causes a lot of it. And if they're not as stressed, they're feeling better, boy, they're going to not eat as much. And then they, it gets in that pattern. They don't eat as much. They lose weight. They start feeling better and they just continue. So one of the things that we found is when we had our ADHD product, people were finding that when they were getting that kick of the caffeine with the L-theme balance for brain, when the methylene blue kicked in, they're actually burning more sugars, more fats, and actually losing weight. And we noticed that across the board. But one of the things that we found is people are going like, well, I really don't have active daily health defense. I really don't have ADHD, but I want to lose some weight. And we found that across the board, people really didn't kind of like to change into that. And as we looked at that, and from the information we're getting back from others, we started being more nimble. We watched for that, and we were able to change and use Rather than using our one caffeine and ADHD, we're able to use green tea and guarana, more of a thermal energy burn. So mm -hmm. now we can target more of that metabolism specifically. So those that are on the GLP-1 shots or that maybe don't want to take those or be assisted with them, they now have a, an outcome that they can actually do, which is actually increasing their better function of their mitochondria. So better energy, better weight loss. Um, and that's where we're a little bit more nimble as a company. We're watching. And when you ask these people and they, they give us feedback from all over the world, what's happening, it's remarkable. We listen to that. We answer those questions. And more importantly, we actually make adjustments as needed because yeah, that's mitochondria fantastic. affects everything. So you have a new product for to help with weight. Right. Yes. What's the name of the product? Metabolism. Okay. Metabolism Plus. Oh, Metabolism nice. Plus. Okay. The ADHD, you'll feel more of a, a, a more of a, a focus and, and brain energy, great for that and kickstart in the brain. And on the other, if you've ever had green tea or grana, you'll feel more of a thermal energy, right? More of a body energy. And so we're really getting into that. Uh, two different caffeines work differently. And that's what's so important as a supplement and form, uh, formulation company is you need to watch for those things. So mm -hmm. it's not we're throwing just some product in and hoping that, you know, I hope it works. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I'm sure that's going to be very popular because I know you guys are already very popular, especially among medical providers, which really says a lot about the quality of what you guys have produced because a lot of the holistic practitioners actually really trust your brand. I mean, there are various brands to choose from, but I've met quite a few personally. They just, they volunteered. Oh yeah, that's the product I use, you know, because I said, oh yeah, I use this product. So, well, that's what I have in the office. So it, it's really wonderful that you guys are bringing this. And then, you know, doctors are actually really recognizing of the quality of the products. And you mentioned infection. Of course, that's a, you know, kind of an important issue because I, I get a lot of questions about how methylene blue interact with uh, microbes. I'm just curious, when it comes to infection, does it help with infection across the board, like all, type of, all types of infections? So I think it, it does help with uh, 
like different critters, right? Right. Bacteria, virus, fungi, the parasites, right? It helps with yeah. all those. And you have to remember, originally it was used for malaria. So think about that. I mean, that was very effective for malaria. And then it's been around a lot for UTIs. So it was in a lot of the old fashioned medications for urinary incontinence and to prevent urinary tract infections. And so, so it hits a lot, of, like you said, all the organisms, all the microorganisms from parasites to fungi to, you know, the bacteria and viruses. Because as you know, also wonder if they purified methylene blue, it turned out to be hydroxychloroquine. That's the mother compound for it. And so that, so we're seeing it hitting a lot of different areas. But if you go back to the old fashioned medicines, Boy, we used it for the UTIs and for malaria and for parasites and for a lot of those different microorganisms. So across the board, it seems to be working well in these doses. Even mold. We, we don't talk about it all the way, yes. but even, even with that as well. And there's a lot of people that are affected with that as well. Yeah, that's a huge issue right now that's coming to right. the awareness of people because I think- Yeah, more awareness. More mold's a big one. And they- and the other thing that some people have even ask you and I ask us, is it well for taking it through the gut, does it kill all the mic, you know, the microbiome? Yes, that's a big question. That, but we found with the dosages, you know, we're not seeing the diarrhea, we're not seeing the problems with antibiotics that are killing it. So the way that it's naturally doing it, we're not seeing all the side effects of people taking too many antibiotics. So I'm not killing the microbiome. And so we've not had one complaint about GI upset or getting diarrhea or having any GI tracts. So again, we're using the minimum amount of methylene blue, so we're not going to overwhelm that digestive tract, but we sure have not seen any problems with it mm. affecting the microbiome. Yeah, the one question, which is a legitimate question, people say, well, if it kills microbes, how does it know not to kill the good bacteria in the gut? How do you reconcile? On one hand, it can... Uh -huh. Yeah, you wonder, and I, you know, and I guess no one's ever really done the research because there's no money in it, I guess, but somehow just that natural product itself is able to, you know, kill the, the organisms and maybe it deals with the way it gets picked up by the mitochondria, but we've not seen it killing the good bacteria. I've just not had any reports of it. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure the mechanism, but I just know it doesn't kill it and it's been around for hundreds of years. So it's, there's something that it naturally seems to kill the bad bugs and not, you know, not do the and not kill the good ones. But you see that with some other agents too, where it could just pick them up and and just the way it's formed can kill the bad things and keep the good ones healthy. So, Wow. It, it, interestingly enough, whether people like nano silver or not, nano silver is one of those other type of things that doesn't kill the, the good flora, but actually gets rid of the bad, which is interesting. It's so interesting. That makes, makes me almost wonder if there's something mythical going on. That yeah, there's... The other threats. <laughs> that, uh, how does it know? Yeah, there's a uh, there, maybe there's a different fabric is operating on that. Device. Right, there's something there are different. So yeah, so okay, so we'll leave it at that. And people were asking, what's the best way to get pharmaceutical grade of methylene blue? So there are different sources Ooh. of methylene blue. How do you answer that? That's a great question. With that, we've gone to great lengths. Uh, we've done a lot of pharmacokinetic testing in our previous companies and what we've done before we really launched the methylene blue. So we've done uh, full clinical trials before on different products and things of that nature. So we're able to source where a lot of pharmaceutical products or compounding pharmacies would try to source. And we've had compounding pharmacies do the research on us. You can see them online. They'll talk to us. They'll recommend us because they've done a deep dive. Everything we have is online. Everything to do, we test our raw ingredients. Most importantly, we test uh, as well our final product. If you see some of the product online, it doesn't show their C of A certificate of analysis. So, so in that product, so it's tested for everything in it, the heavy metals and all, everything, they should have it listed if they do it. If they don't, I recommend going somewhere else. It's an easy way to, to limit who's good with, with uh, methylene blue. But our biggest um, compliment has really been pharmacies and compounding pharmacies buying directly from us and selling at their pharmacies because mm -hmm. we meet all the standards for USP and then also in that pharmaceutical grade. But it is difficult to get. You want to get the right stuff. It's not just jumping online and buying a 1% that you'll find on Amazon. It's completely different. You're mostly dye. And with those, you most of them don't have a C of A and they're really meant for fish tanks. I important to know that, but um, I can send you some links on that if you want to share with some of your... Uh, viewers as well and okay. give a little bit more deeper dive but at least to touch on that yes very important we've gone to great lengths to protect that and uh, really uh, have enough methylene blue to supply what we need to for the demand that we have
Yeah, that's fantastic. I guess it's the same grade as what doctors use when they give IV infusions of Mountain Correct. Blue, right? You're getting it from the same, same source grade. for my IV, right? Yes. Okay. So another a question that comes up a lot is people are confused about dosing and how to take it. So maybe you can talk a little bit about just what's the appropriate way of dosing methylene blue. Well, at least from my viewpoint, you know, we're, we're still keeping the doses per tablet basically at lower so people can't overdose because this is one of those medications that too much is causes harm too little doesn't give you the benefits and so we try to get a medium dose so you know if people are just doing it for one particular thing like the you know the brain fog which recommend of the adhd 365 maybe two up to four in the mornings i also use the tbi 365 that has the nicotinamide and the b6 and the nac in it we use that at night to help the brain repair itself and so two of those at night so you i have some people pro? doing uh, huh? the the memory well, neuro the pro memory. is vitamin c Okay. Methylene well, blue. You, this is the. Do you recommend two to four tablets? Yes, of the ADHD one. The one that's the TBI 365 and the memory one, basically, is it's two at night. So I have a lot of people taking two at night to help repair the brain with the methylene blue and the nicotinamide and the NAC and the glycine. And then they take two of the ADHD in the morning. And that seems to give them the benefits without overdoing it. We do have one with the vitamin C for those that are really sensitive to caffeine. They take the methylene blue with the with the vitamin C and they get the benefits from that. And that pill was the one that they used for years to prevent urinary tract infections between the vitamin C and the methylene blue. And so that's where we've had the, you know, and so some people need to take more and they can tell from their bodies, their brain's more focused with four to six in the morning. But we try to keep it at two of the ADHD, two to four if you're just doing that for ADHD and brain fog. If they're trying to repair their brain and prevent dementia or other problems down the line, then two of the ADHD in the morning and two of the neuro of the TBI or memory one at night. Okay, great. So I think for just an idea of how much methylene blue is in those tablets, I think two of the ADHD tablets contain 10 milligrams of methylene blue, right? Well, each, each one contains 2.5 milligrams of methylene blue. Oh, uh, okay. so if you're taking a dose of the ADHD, four tablets total, that'd it's be 10. 10 milligrams. If you're just taking two, you're five. And then at night, as Dr. Warren's talking about with the memory, right, the neuropro memory, those are actually uh, 10 milligrams of methylene blue. So you'd be at 30 milligrams of methylene blue. I personally do about 45, 47 milligrams of methylene blue a day is usually what I do. Okay, so the NeuroPro is 10 milligrams per two tablets, right? Per tablet. No, per tablet. Per tablet. Okay. All right. So yeah. people take two, that's 20 milligrams. Correct. And then if you take two tablets in the morning of the ADHD, that's five milligrams only. Right. right. And then you also have the brain fog, which is a liquid. You yes. take a, a dropper full of it and that contains how much methylene blue? 10 milligrams as well. That's 10. Uh, as a dropper for, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. And let's just give people an idea. What is the dose range that's therapeutic per day? What's the safe and effective type of dose? Yeah, anywhere from, uh, you know, 10, 15 milligrams up to about 40, 40, 50, depending on the individual, depending upon, of course, their, their weight mitochondrial the function, mm -hmm. you know, if they're, if they're fine. Uh, TBI or dementia or, you know, everyone's just a little bit different. But if you're under that two milligrams, three milligrams, what they talk about, you know, under is very therapeutic and very within the range. But really with our products, you're even under that in that range of 30 to 40 or under is sufficient. Yeah. And try not to go over 75 to 80 is where you start getting harm when you get up to those 80 to 100 that other people do. So we try to stay away from that area. I see. I see the IV dose for acute use of methylene blue is three milligrams per kilo, right? So right. if a person is 50 kilo, which is a fairly light person, that's 150 milligrams. Exactly. No, that, that's so that's kind of the, the the therapeutic dose for in a in a acute situation in the hospital. Correct. So you're way under that. Way under that, dose. right. Okay. Another question is, should a person take it long term? Or should you take breaks from it? You know, is this something that you know, you should just do it ongoing basis? 
Well, we've never seen the thing where people start taking it and they lose its effectiveness like a lot of different medications. And so, unfortunately, the brain fogs with us all the time because of our diets and other things in our lives. So, you know, people always probably need to take a vacation. It's always nice to take it off for a while. But I think most people that we know have been just taking it steady because they don't build up a tolerance. So they're not eating more and more. I think it's something if you had to have more and more, you'd want to take the breaks. But we're not seeing that, that the dose they start with seems to be this dose they do for months on end. And I've not seen people taking a real break from it because the brain fog doesn't go away. But and if people keep getting more, you know, the foods that we eat and our diets keep causing more inflammation in our body and weakness. So the methylene blue is there just to help repair it and keep us going at our highest level. So I don't think there really needs to be a stopping point. Mm, okay. it, and in fact, I'll add to that a little bit because our mitochondria are always at risk, right? From the foods we eat, the waves we have, Toxins. our cell phones, all of our computers everything that we're being bombarded with on a constant basis are all affecting our mitochondria. So as Dr. Warren says, we need it long-term because we're not changing what's happened to us. All different type of things that we do to the body, whether it be for skin, whether it be for other muscle, go to the gym, we injure it to break it down to rebuild it, right? And so I also believe in muscle confusion, eating confusion. The body's constantly changing. So for myself, I'll change up my doses of methylene a little bit in a day, depending upon how I feel. If I feel great, you know, then, or if I need more energy, I'll take four ADHD. If I don't, maybe one or two. But then for me, I'm usually five days on and two days off. So mm. somewhere in there, if you miss a day, don't worry, don't stress, mm. right? The body's very right. resilient. But on an ongoing basis, I will take it all the time. But, you know, if you miss a day or two days, don't worry about it. You, it it's the long term that we're looking at, not, you know, that I'm going to fix everything in a week or a month or, or 90 days. That's a great answer. Yeah. It's, it's very reasonable. It's what I call a very sensible approach. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. it. Have you guys heard of, um, you know, what people's experiences are with various infections, any word from people who suffer from Lyme disease or other strange infections in the body? I've been using it for, you know, I'm, we don't have in Utah where I live, we don't have much Lyme disease. So a lot of people like that terminology. I see a lot for chronic Epstein-Barr. Mm. And so all my people coming in for when they're having that flare up of chronic Epstein-Barr and the, you know, they get the brain fog and the fatigueness and they're sleeping all the time. They're all on IV methylene blue. They're all going home on, you know, the PO methylene blue that we have because I've seen a really benefit. And the, now my patients are trained when they feel a flare up coming on, let's say the chronic mono, which is similar to chronic you know, Lyme's disease, and they come to try to, you know, control it and to feel better. And so besides suppressing whatever microorganisms going on, boy, they're starting to get the brain fog, their energy levels go up. And that's whether it's Lyme's disease, whether it's chronic mono, whether it's a flare up of some autoimmune disease, keeping those mitochondria at their highest peak is what's making the difference. And so I'm always putting them on IV methylene blue. If they're getting ready to go on a trip and they're worried about it, they come in at IV methylene blue to get them boost up and then off the trip they go with their tablet. So I think it does make a big difference in a lot of those chronic illnesses that we're seeing because as you know, those chronic illnesses cause the inflammation, they damage the mitochondria. So if we can get those mitochondria feeling better and keep that inflammation <laughs> down, they're gonna feel a lot better. What they're also noticing is if they use the methylene blue, but also use the ADHD, the active daily health defense or ADHD, depending upon which label, same thing. But now they're able to get up and go because part of the problem is I just don't have energy. I can't get up. And methylene blue will kick that up in the long term, but the caffeine L-theanine ratio will get them up so they can get up and have a life, get moving, get functioning through the day as the mitochondria starts repairing itself. And that's one of the biggest boosts that people have found is that they can, that's why we call it active daily health. Impact. I can get up and be active. And um, that's really changing a lot because, you know, you just have that fatigue factor right. and you got to get over that. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And then uh, some other questions include some details. Uh, someone asked, uh, should I take it on an empty stomach? Uh, so does that matter? I've never seen any difference. I haven't had anybody report whether it's on the empty stomach or full stomach. So I don't okay. see much difference. Have you, Dan? None. Someone asked, why did you make it in a tablet form? And, um, and what about the magnesium steer rate that you have to put in? And, it, you know, is there concerns of side effects for, for something that you have to add in in order to make a tablet form? Absolutely. So on that, the liquid tincture, some people like tincture, some don't. Some like the taste, the blue tongue. If you put it in the very back of your throat, like a, you know, mother birdie and, you know, swallow right away, you'll get a blue tongue. 
Or if you put it in water, believe it or not, it will turn blue if you drink it. It's not going to turn your mouth blue. That's another way to take it without doing it. But some just don't like the liquid tincture. I love the liquid brain fog only because not only does it have the methylene blue and the vitamin C, but our mineral oxide, which is our stabilized oxygen. So there's a true benefit of the brain fog versus a tablet. It's easier to take. It's easier to ship. My floor, people say, oh, I got it on my counter. How do I get it off? The staining factor. But you can also throw it in your gym bag and throw it in your travel bag and not worry. And it's a little easier to take. And those that don't want the blue tongue, they don't have to have it. It also allows us to put some other products in there. As Dr. Warner's talking about with the, um, uh, the NeuroPro memory. And so using it in a tablet form, Rather than a pill, a lot of pills as far as uh, veggie caps or some caps don't disintegrate as well. And so our compressed tablet dissolves very quickly. If you take a tablet, put it in water, you watch how it dissolves without any stomach acids. It, it's remarkable. Mm. When something tastes really bad, it may not make a difference for some people, but for people like me, I will refuse to take it. So right. I don't <laughs> care how good it is. I am just not putting that in my mouth. So, so everybody yeah. says they'll take the healthy stuff, but when they taste it, it's like, <laughs> yeah. And now you can talk about the magnesium stearate. Like, what, what, uh, what are your thoughts? So, magnesium stearate, everything in moderation is okay, right? And so, w- when I say that is magnesium stearate has been used. It's FDA approved, approved by the Safety and Quality Assurance, um, the Organic Certification USD. I'm just going through that national organic program, uh, whole food supplement standards. It meets everything in that regards and is done as grass, generally recognized as safe. You know, using anything in too much is 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 really, you know, right. you don't want to do. And so it's actually a combination of two salts. And But what happens with that is, is that it allows it as a flow agent. So all these things don't stick together. One of the nasty secrets that no one ever talks about is, What's really in my vitamins? Very few manufacturers in the supplement world, and that's why the supplements are a a crazy world, is that they don't really care. I hate to say that. And so they don't test their products. They throw some products together. And what happens is when you take all these together, they don't all mix the same. And so magnesium stearate is actually one of those flow agents that allows those products not to stick all the way together and be mixed. So that when you get a pill or when you get a tablet or when you get, I'm talking about good manufacturers, right? You're getting a good quality product that is the same from your first tablet to your second tablet to the end to actually any that you order on down the line. And we ensure that with our certificate of analysis. Uh, Magnesium stearate, if you're taking a lot, whether that's magnesium stearate or magnesium, you could get diarrhea. So, you know, that would be more of a problem with the magnesium stearate, but you're not taking enough to even touch that at all. Mm-hmm. People can look up, it is right. grass, recognized as safe, FDA approved. And really those that test use that because it's the only thing that really mixes well. So you are you have a quality assurance of your vitamins and, and minerals yeah. in that tablet. Yeah. Interesting. Well, uh-huh. And an interesting thing on that, even the recommendation is less than 2,500 milligrams per kilo per day. We're not even getting close to that. So, I mean, it's just such a, it's so safe that, I mean, that's what the FDA approves or the, the committees that do it say it, it has to be fewer than 2,500 milligrams per kilo. So barely a touch, a drop in that whole thing. So that's why we're using it because it seems to be so safe and we're just using my note dose. I see. Yeah. Well, everything in life is about risk versus benefits, right? So you can't (laughs) because a a potential minuscule risk at very, very high dose, and you can't just say that I I can't touch something. I mean, you have to really be be reasonable about it. Otherwise, you can't, you can't quite live. (laughs) You just give up trying. Yeah. Um, So is this a, it's considered a prescription drug, right? Or, Or Actually, what you guys are bringing to the market is considered a supplement that includes a supplement. prescription drug, right? Yes. It's prescription if it goes into IV, mm. uh, where it's sterilized and introduced by IV because it's approved with the FDA. And since it has been shown to be so beneficial in so many aspects of health, one question from people is why isn't big pharma or pharma pushing the substance? So how would you answer that? That's a simple one. There's no money. 
<laughs> you know, they only want the our country's used to be focused on money. You know, we were joking about it today on a, a facial cream that if you charge two hundred and fifty dollars for a cream, everybody's going to think it's better because it's got two hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> when it's only a three dollar you know bottle <laughs> production cost. And so when we started developing this, when I, with the company, my goal was I want it to be inexpensive so that more people can take it because I'd rather have something out there that's that's inexpensive, affordable, so more people take and get the benefit from it. But Big Pharma doesn't want it because they want you know more money. They want all the research behind it. This has been researched for over 100 years, so there's been thousands and thousands of studies already been done for us, so we know it's safe, so we don't have to recuperate that money. But we also want it affordable for people, and Big Pharma just seems to turn down anything that doesn't have much money. They can't patent it now. They can't you know make it special. And so it's better to ignore it and try to come up with some other things to replace it. And unfortunately, fortunate for us and unfortunately for them, they haven't been able to find a molecule like methylene blue that can bring nutrients into mitochondria and take all the toxins out of the mitochondria. So we've got that benefit from all the years of studies on it, but they just don't want to do any more research on it because they don't think they could ever patent it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a fascinating point you, you brought out. So you're saying methylene blue as a molecule can actually bring nutrients into mitochondria and take out toxins. Right. Yes. So that, substance that, that can do both at the same time. Do, you know, bring good things into it, bring in the oxygen, get the oxygen stimulated, and then all those oxygen reactive oxygen species that are produced as the byproduct of the mitochondria and those smokestacks, it's able to take that, those reactive toxin substance back out put in the bloodstream to go to the kidneys and be excreted. And it's the only substance can do both uh, that's out there. And so that's what makes it even more unique is it's getting me bringing good things in, taking bad things out. Mm, wow. And, and it recycles. So as long as it's in the bloodstream, it's recycling. It's doing that over and over and over again. That redox oxygen back and forth. That's why it can turn clear to blue, to green, to blue, to clear, because it's oxidizing, pulling in oxygen, getting mm. rid of the oxygen, bringing the toxins out. So that's what makes it such unique molecules, all the benefits it can do. And in fact, since we're on this subject, Doc, thanks for bringing this up. But just, just for people to know, though, you know, since you will urinate blue or green, or, you know, sometimes people go to the bathroom and go, oh, it's all gone. You know, it's, it's I'm clear. And then all mm. of a sudden, four hours later, it's blue again. Mm. That's normal. It's not that it ever all the way exited. It's just in its state that it's in, Right. So right. very interesting to know because people think, oh, it's all gone. It's like, wait, it's still here. Do we know how long it stays in the body when you take a dose? Usually half-life about eight to 10 hours. Okay. Wow. That's great. And generally it could be six to 10, but usually that's within that range. Right. Hmm. And are there any contraindications? Are there some people who could just can't take it? You know, I think the biggest one is people with that uh, G6 P deficiency where they can't metabolize certain things, there definitely is a, is a contraindication. You know, even when you use ozone on those people and other products, they they know about it because it's a family history. They've got it. It's not like you get it out of the clear blue. There's a family history of having that G6P deficiency. We also know, and we've been looking at this oftentimes, even with some of our psychiatrists, is that there was a warning because methylene blue is an MAO inhibitor for depression that, well, we could get serotonin syndrome if we're on the right SSRIs or the SNRIs or any other drugs that do that. But we found out these have to be in large doses. And so even myself, you know, doing psychiatry, I wasn't a psychiatrist, but I worked doing geriatric psychiatry for years. I never saw serotonin syndrome. Our board, we have somebody on our board who just retired as a psychiatrist after 40 years and has written every book. I said, how many times have you seen a serotonin syndrome in your life? Never. So I think it's, people want to talk about it, so we just tell people if they're on an SSRI and it's, a, you know, the moderate dose, let's say for Prozac, 20 to 40 a day, they're not going to see a serotonin syndrome. If they're at the 120 or more, they need to talk to their psychiatrist. But we know that it's there. So if someone starts taking an antidepressant and they start feeling worse on it, maybe they do have it. But I've never seen it. It's possible. So we just tell people to be aware of it. And if something goes wrong, to check back with their primary care doctor or their psychiatrist. But... I just think it's very rare that we'd see that. So that's another contraindication. And those are the two biggest ones. You know, mm. the people can be allergic to it. I've not had anybody write to us to say they're allergic to it, but that's still a possibility. So those tend to be the three biggest ones that I've seen. Okay. So let's say somebody does have G6PD deficiency. And what happens to these people if they take methylene blue? I think that breaks down the red blood cells and they can't carry oxygen around and just get pretty sick is what I've seen and heard. 
I've never had one. I've looked for it for years in my, some of my patients and I've never found it. So that's just what I've heard. It just breaks the, the red blood cells break down and they get in trouble with that. So. Mm. And how can a person get tested to see if they There's have? There's some simple blood tests. I mean, I, I think I know from uh, my lab, I think Quest Labs like 45 bucks to get a G6P deficiency test done. So it's inexpensive. And, but most people do know by a certain age from their family history, if they have it in their history of their family. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause a couple of people did mention under the video uh, in the, our last interview said that they just didn't do well. They didn't feel well on methylene blue. So I suppose probably the most likely well, explanation is that they may have G6PD deficiency. They, they might. I uh, just looking through the whole spectrum of things. Not as a, a medical doctor myself, but you know, been in the clinics and, and but the other thing too is when we're talking about our bodies and we're getting rid of things, remember we talk about lymphatic drainage, and people may know about lymphatic drainage is the way our body gets rid of waste. Yeah. And so our lymph system is very uh, particular and we can get blocked and there can be all the ickiness. Every cell eats, every cell discards, right? And if that gets blocked up, we get sick. But when we open that up and push that out, you can feel a little bit you know, a little bit sluggish when that lymphatic drainage is going out, it's processing through the body. Mm. And I have a little theory on this. Most people that, and, and again, take this uh, as, you know, with the doctor, but, you know, you are getting rid of toxins. We are getting rid of those things as we're uptaking with oxygen. We're eliminating toxins that have been there, those ROS that's been there. And so maybe a little bit, if, if it's something that's severe, but if you just feel a little something, that doesn't, if I go to the gym and I, I lift my weights and my, you know, wow, now my, my bicep kind of doesn't feel great. Doesn't mean that it's totally bad for you either. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want to point that out, that it's something to consider, not uh, just rush and take a ton more, but it, it's something that's what the body's doing. And that's a function of it, right? And so uh, just to be aware of those things. But even um, as people are losing weight, like Dan is saying, that they'll have the toxins or kept in our fat. As we lose fat, those toxins have to be detoxed by the liver so they'll feel down. And then liver detox programs that do those will feel bad. So we're seeing that often Dan, I think is correct. And people who have a little problems with the methylene blue is probably getting rid of toxins in their body. And that's just the body's response, getting it out. Cause we see it often with other detoxes we've done or other problems. The G6P again, if they do have that, they're going to get the dark urine, they're going to get jaundice, they're going to have some real severe abdominal pain and other problems. And so, but I think most of the time when we have people not feeling good on the methylene blue is more um, just getting rid of toxins and trying to deal with it than a real true. And staying hydrated problem. key too, right? Yep. Drinking and making sure you're, you're getting enough fluid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good advice. Another question that I think is a, a very interesting topic is this big debate between methylene blue and nitric oxide in the biohacking world, right? People who, who may want to use both and then getting really confused. Wait, I think one says it's, a, it's curbing the other. So there's some reports of methylene blue blocking nitric oxide production. And so what is going on between these two camps of, uh, of biohacking, you know, substances? Well, I, I want to read you something that I I told my AI, I said, I want to know the differences. We're talking about this. And the AI wrote the best report I've ever seen. It says, oh. imagine your body is like a city with roads and cars. Nitric oxide is like a traffic light that helps the cars or blood move smoothly throughout the roads or your blood vessels. When the traffic lights work well, everything flows nicely and the cars can get to where they need to get to. Methylene blue is like the mechanic who can fix the traffic lights that are stuck on green. Sometimes too many cars are zooming around too fast, making a traffic jam. The mechanic or methylene blue steps in to turn some of the lights red, slowing things down and making sure the cars move at a safe speed. But if the mechanics work too much and turn too many red lights on, then the cars can't move at all, causing a different type of problem. So it's important for mechanics or methylene blue to fix only the traffic lights that really need it. In simple terms, nitric oxide helps blood flow smoothly in your body. Methylene blue can slow it down if there's too much blood rushing around, but it needs to be careful not to slow it down too much. And so you know, when I've looked at it and, and examined it and read all the reports, if you're taking them a few hours apart, you're not going to get any problems. So they actually need both of them in their bodies to make it run as efficient, just like this car thing. They need that to work together to get the highest efficiency. So I don't have problems people taking nitric oxide or methylene blue. Sometimes they just recommend a few hours difference between the two. But if they're working together to get us to be on a high efficiency, I don't think there's any problem doing that. Hmm, interesting. 
Wow, give it to AI. That's uh, I know they're smarter than me. <laughs> It took you into a story. That's pretty cool. Actually, I said I needed simple terms for biohackers is what I said. Write it into simple (laughs) biohacker language. And that's what it came out saying. (laughs) That's that's awesome. It's poetic. (laughs) Yeah. So reading up on methylene blue nitric oxide, it sounds like they can both help with the same things in the body. I mean, it almost almost sounds like they're synergistic. Correct. In a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of ways they are. You know, I mean, if you think about the other thing is not to bring up the subject of ED, but if someone had ED and got too much nitric oxide and they had a prolonged particular problem, the cure for it is methylene blue to try to release it to get the blood back out. So, oh. uh, so it's they have to be synergistic together. So we've not had any people, at least in my experience, have to- to talked to me and maybe Dan's heard, but we have people taking the nitric oxide products and the methylene blue have not had any reports of any damage. They seem to work together synergistically to work, you know, improving our mitochondria health. Yeah, and Doc's right. In fact, even enhanced, right? They, they, they're they performing better and, and noticing a better outcome. Right. So, and there's, there's different uh, NO, E, NOS, there's different, there's good and bad, you know, nitric oxide. So, Right. There are various enzymes there's, producing there's different, different ones, ones, right? So yeah, without the going into a big complex gas, system, some good, right. some bad. Right. You can't just say nitric oxide as if that right. exactly you know, all the mechanisms. Right. Yeah, it's right. just much more intricate. The gist from what I've read is that the two can complement each other, that that there's a, almost a natural intelligence, you know, kind of contained in these molecules and, and uh yeah, helping to enhance the In body. those moderate levels and not overdoing something, right? Because we always tend more must be better. So I better take some more allergenic nitrous oxide, you know, or I better take more of the other. It's, again, keeping those, you know, at the right ranges and right. letting the body do its normal function. That's the beauty thing. The body understands and knows what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I think one of the last questions is someone questioned about the vitamin C whether or not it's ascorbic acid or actually vitamin C. It, it's from fruit. So it's derived from fruit. Mm-hmm. So it's so, not synthetic. Yeah, it's a, a natural form medicine. of vitamin C. Right. Yes. Okay. Not, not a chemical compound. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. And then uh, one last question. Somebody has urinary frequency and sensitive bladder. And can have you heard of methylene blue? been helpful in those situations. It's very interesting. And I didn't know this, but a few weeks ago, I had a patient that had, you know, urine incontinence and irritable bladder, you know, almost like an interstitial cystitis. And someone said, Hey, have you ever, and I forgot the name. It was like Barbabil or something like that. And I've never heard of it. So I go to the pharmacy and ask this old pharmacist, do you have any? He said, yeah, I do. The second ingredient on it was methylene blue. Mm. <laughs> and I go, oh, are you kidding me? And it was, and it's a bit, medicine's been around for years. It had some other inhibitors in it for bladder infections and irritants, but one of the ingredients was methylene blue. So it's been around for years. We just don't think about it, but I was shocked when I bought the bottle of it with methylene blue in it. So it has, it seems to be helping those people with the bladder problems. So that's, I thought it was crazy that it was in there. So that's so interesting. Yeah, this is fantastic. Is there anything else that you guys want to add that you think that, um, you know, listeners should know about, uh, about you know, like, is there anything new things you guys are developing that you want to bring to the market to help more people or um, there are other things we haven't addressed? Well, the one thing we, that we haven't we, addressed that we're working on is, you know, the skincare line, as we know, it prevents skin cancers. We know that it helps stop damage from the sun. And so, you know, both orally and in our new skin formulation, when it comes out, that doesn't turn your skin blue. It just actually <laughs> heals the skin. No so smurfs. smurfs running around. Smurfs are not good. <laughs> it's bad for our formula. But, you know, we're looking into those products. So we want it internally to help the body and the mitochondria and externally to prevent the skin cancers or to prevent the damage from the sun and keeping the mitochondria in our skin at its peak performance. And so it's supposed to help with wrinkles. It's supposed to help with, you know, a lot of different things. So I have some right in front of me right now. <laughs> and the office staff has been using it and they're having good reports. Nobody's That's running around with blue face, but it, <laughs> I think we're going to have that. And then, you know, we're also looking at it, adding some other um, mitochondria builders up right now that we're just can't say right now, but we're just getting the products in this next week to even boost its mitochondria health and its power even a little bit more. We're trying to get these off the ground first, but we have always looking for new things to get people healthier. Yeah, because there, there's always different symptoms that that when combined with other products 
really enhance certain things. And so uh, the outcomes that we're doing, the data we're collecting, and just to tell your audience and listeners, they had a great response uh, in this and asking their questions, giving them the help um, that they need, and then their feedback, what they're feeling and getting is extremely helpful. And mm-hmm. so that helps us in our formulation. As Dr. Warren's talking about, there are things that we have on the table right now that we're working on formulation-wise to even enhance things better, uh, mental clarity, things like that, that we're working consistently on because we care about the public. We care about them having great outcomes and having a, a very efficacious product for whatever symptom they're feeling. And so we really truly appreciate them and you getting the word out because the more that know and the more feedback we get, the, the better help it is for us and to help uh, others as well. So thanks to all of them. Yep, yeah, thank you. Yeah, wonderful. And I would always pass on people's comments. And if there are things that, you know, new, new questions and new things to be addressed, I think, uh, yeah, this can be an ongoing conversation. Yeah, yeah that's good. I got a lot of questions from people overseas and they said, you know, how can I get this product? They're not sure if you guys actually ship overseas. What countries can you ship to? We do. We're working on uh, countries all over right now to ensure some have different uh, regulations for what you can ship in or not or customs. And then we're working on shipping rates. So we are working on all those. Uh, We do it kind of on a case by case basis as people will do that. So feel free to reach out to us. We are going to be putting a, a thing up on WhatsApp. So we'll be having a WhatsApp uh, number that people can call and and text so that we can have better communication just so that they know as well. So um, less money for them. But yes, yeah, so we'll work on those and uh, some regulations. I'll have some more news for you on that as well shortly. But um, yeah, if they have a question, let us know. But we can ship most places. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's an easier way just, to say it at the moment. They, they can just uh, contact your your the support line directly. Right. Yes, let you absolutely. Know. Okay, beautiful. Watch on the website. We'll get a WhatsApp uh, on there as well so they can contact the WhatsApp. Okay, well. I will put that number in the show note as well. Okay, yeah. super. Yeah, fantastic. What a great right, well, discussion. It, this is so informative. I'm sure it answered a lot of questions for a lot of people. And I really enjoyed talking with you too. Thank you for doing the great work and bringing such a great product to the world and then, you know, keep, you know, innovating and bringing more good stuff to help people feel better. Thank you. Better. Yeah. Well, we love your part. You're a huge part. So, oh. we're, you know, big hugs and, and thanks to you um, for <laughs> doing this. And really, you know, people love you and they love, you know, giving that feedback. So, I mean, that, that speaks volumes of you as well. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah. I always respond to comments. I pay close attention. I really want to address people's concerns. Anyone out there listening, if you think, you know, some of your loved ones will will benefit from the information and they can really benefit from a product like this, please share the episode and uh, please put in your comment about your experiences or your thoughts or your insights about this wonderful uh, product and what it, it has done, what can do or new research you want to share. So again, thank you so much and really appreciate you guys, Dr. Warren and Dan. Thank thanks you. for all the information. And uh, yeah, if we get a lot of more questions, maybe we'll do, do a again. follow-up episode. Yes. That sounds okay. great. Love yeah. it. Okay. Right. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.